Hello and welcome to Eye on the Money, the television show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as make your money work for you. I'm Ingrid Nantege. On today's show, we discuss how to build a sustainable business. COVID-19 pandemic has threatened most of the businesses and most SMEs are likely to be wiped out completely. This is the case for most of the global SMEs, but African businesses seem significantly exposed due to the pre-existing conditions that hit by any pandemic will leave them gasping for air to survive. The African business environment, besides COVID-19, continues to experience other disruptions like political disruptions, especially during elections, climate change that affects agricultural sector industry, unpredictable and volatile stock markets, economic recessions and financial constraints, limiting access to capital. These, among others, coupled with pre-existing African business practices, threaten the survival of African businesses in the short term and in the long term. How then can entrepreneurs build strong, sustainable and lasting businesses within the African context in light of the above mentioned challenges? Joining me in studio to discuss all this and so much more is Wangeshi Muruyuki, Country Manager, Invest in Africa. Welcome to the show, Wangeshi. Thank you, Ingrid. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. So just Thank to get into the meat of the conversation today, which is how to build a lasting business, and I would like to mention that I'm aware of the webinar that's happening December 10th, which is Thursday, where Invest in Africa, you know, has come on board together with Strathmore Business School to just have a dialogue around, you know, how SMEs on the continent can build resilience and just be sustainable. But before we get into all those details, I would just like to ask, this year, with 2020, with coronavirus, we've seen a lot of businesses go under. So many businesses close shop. So if you just to give us a recap and paint a picture for us, what would you say is the current situation with SMEs in the country, considering all the measures the government to try to put in place, and with, you know, a bit of easing of restrictions? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ingrid. Um, Definitely the impact of COVID-19 on uh, small and medium enterprises and particularly the micro businesses has been severe in, and it continues all the way from uh, earlier in the quarter, actually in April this year. And uh, despite the reopening of the economy and the second wave, we have seen the impact continue to grow and this is expected to have even major impact by next year. So first of all, um, on the current states, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, MSMEs in the rural area, their impacts, the impacts are diverse. We've got um, very vulnerable businesses right there, and the livelihoods are being impacted. And this is cutting across communities, across households, across businesses, regardless of where they are and what uh, they have been uh, doing. So, first of all, remember that in our country, 80% of uh, the economy is built on the informal sectors, made up of micro uh, businesses. And, um, you know, when you look at the informal sector, this is a Juakali, you know, people providing services and goods and all that. Our study that uh, we rolled out in July and another follow-up survey conducted in October this year have both shown that over 25% of businesses have shut down. And these are the ones that exist on our platform. Given another three months or six months, we will have another 10% shutting down. So business shutdown is, uh, is a reality. A lot of them are struggling uh, financially. They are strained, they are stressed. Um, some of them have, re re uh, have pivoted their businesses, others are repurposing. Some closed their shop, they're now doing masks. Others are suppliers, they're importing different uh, products that you know, buyers are looking for, corporates are looking for. So it's all the impact, but the impact is, um, is real. And uh, what we need to be now looking at is, is uh, issues of resilience, recovery, how can we support them in building back, um, in building back better, which is uh, the work of Invest in Africa in uh, creating more and more awareness to 
prepare them for future risks, not just the COVID-19 pandemic. Because as we say, tomorrow there's going to be another disaster. So at Invest in Africa, we've started looking at this from a disaster risk perspective. And not just looking at uh, the current COVID-19, which is sudden, but remember there are also other elusive and uh, slow onset disasters like environmental degradation, droughts, you know, uh, locusts, which affect even more livelihoods on aggregate than sudden onset uh, disasters like COVID-19. Thank you, Wangeshi. You mentioned 85% of businesses, according to your research, have shut down. That's a big number by any currency, by whatever language you say it, which is a bit sad if you ask me. What then does that mean for businesses, particularly locally here, in terms of just reinventing themselves, in terms of going back to the drawing board and thinking about how to create a sustainable and long-lasting business, regardless of the situation, foreseen or unforeseen? So, first of all, you know, what does this mean? What it means is that we are already isolating a critical part of a, or a group of people within the mainstream economy because they can't continue. You know, what it means is that, um, uh, you know, investments, for instance, um, are not protected mm -hmm. against hazards. And this is a key challenge that we really have to tackle effectively if we must attain or to achieve sustainable development. Now, going back to the issue of sustainability, sustainability just means that tomorrow, you're ready for tomorrow. Your business can live beyond you. And therefore, we can plan better, we can project better, we have uh, goods and services that will reach the market. It's a lot of things. But now when you look at a country like Kenya, and uh, more so in Africa, there are very few measures that SMEs have undertaken to reduce, uh, you know, this kind of risk. We, we lack policy frameworks. We don't have institutional mechanisms. Mm -hmm. You know, there is lack of information, awareness. You know, there is a lot of that. If we have to build back better for tomorrow, it means that there is a lot of work that needs to be done in uh, generating knowledge, educating uh, small and medium enterprises, and it's not the work of any single organization. It is the Invest in Africa and others, you know, it's government, private sector, it's institutions like uh, Strathmore Business School, all coming together to tackle this challenge. Right. And as you mentioned, that, you know, like the 25% business shutdown oh. or uh, okay. the loss of jobs, it's a sign of already existing challenges. COVID just came out to accentuate problems that have existed around uh, supporting SMEs. So we want to ensure that these businesses survive beyond their owners, survive beyond this year and another year, and build businesses that last, because we do have businesses that are also thriving. And there are some that are, are doing so well. They're not just surviving, they're prospering. So that's exactly what we want to do. How do we bring this knowledge to the SMEs? How do we showcase best practice? And how do we get them to understand the measures, the interventions and support mechanisms that are in place to support them? Right. So before we take a break, Wangeshi, just for clarification, is it 25% business shutdown or 85? Because I feel like I might have got it wrong. No. 25% of businesses have shut down. Oh, great, great. Thank you for that clarification. But now, Wangeshi, even as you talk about like local businesses learning how to build themselves into sustainability and being long-lasting beyond generations, um, we know the figures when it comes to shelf life of most small businesses on the continent and depending on one whatever country you're in in africa in some countries the shelf life of most businesses in one is one year in some countries it's two years basically a lot of businesses on this continent really don't have staying power as a matter of fact, earlier on, I was having a conversation with someone from Strathmore Business School, and they were talking about even certain businesses that you think have finally got the ground, made, made mention of KQ, made mention of Nakumach, you know, the ones that you think will make it, and then all of a sudden, poof, 
they've gone up in flames, they've gone up in dust. My question then is, as someone who's going into business, even as, you know, African entrepreneurs embark on starting and building lasting businesses, what are the fundamentals? What's the train of thought? What needs to be in place for this to happen? Thank you, Ingrid. And uh, what you're saying is true. We conducted a study about four years ago with the Strathmore Business School to understand the same. What, what is it like to run an SME? And uh, what is doing business with SMEs in Kenya like? And uh, our study identified five key areas. So number one, the first challenge that we have with any small business in Kenya is awareness, information on opportunities, and more so, not just opportunities. There is also information asymmetry. International companies want to work with local businesses, but they have the wrong information. Small businesses don't have the right information about opportunities or even working with them. Leave alone international companies. Just look at banks, financial service providers. Do they understand SMEs? Do SMEs understand how to work with them? So we, we are having one problem of lack of information and information asymmetry. The second challenge is compliance, which is related to governments. A lot of businesses in Africa have governance challenges. And just understanding the basics of governance. What is governance? Governance is not um, a subject or a concern of a large organization. You actually lay the governance foundation when you open your business, when you start running a business. Compliance, for instance, um, you, you just need to look at the data. How many businesses are tax compliant? How many businesses are evading taxes? You know, those are basic fundamentals. And we, we've witnessed very large organizations in Kenya shut down because of two reasons. You know, when the tax man shows up, there's nothing you can do about it. So you have to build your foundation on the basis of very, very strong governance. Have the proper structures in place, understand processes, lead the organization effectively, and ensure that you're a good corporate citizen as a business because it has very high yields and returns in future. The third factor is lack of finance or access to finance. Now, while there is uh, so much money around flowing in the economy, the supply of capital is, is huge in this market. And uh, also in Africa, we've got lots of investments in that area. But the problem, again, is that businesses are not ready to absorb finance. So most of them will shut down because they're expanding, but they can't sustain that. They can't access um, you know, financing, or they don't even know the right way to go about it. And you know money, 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 money is everything. Money you know, we're talking everything. about money. So that's a very, very big, um, a very, very big challenge. Then there's also education and training. You know, knowledge and know-how. In fact, we've got lots of people running businesses, but they don't have entrepreneurship skills. They don't have entrepreneurship skills. You may not even acquire those skills by going to class. It's just getting the know-how of how to run a business, how to manage an operation, when to expand, you know, when to diversify the business, when to, to shut down various um, you know, business streams and focus on what is your core. That's a very important um, uh, component of running a business. And that explains to you what uh, determines the shelf life. Right. If you look at Kenya, for instance, there are businesses that were set up many years ago. Some of them are not even known. They are family-owned businesses that have been running without so much awareness, but they are very strong. When you look at the foundations, when you look at the impact of the business, so there's, there's, there's a lot that businesses can be able to pick from successful businesses, and that's the essence of why we are running this um, uh, webinar on, on Thursday, because we want to promote cross-learning. We want to showcase businesses that have done well, and also those that are struggling and are start driving 
you know, knowledge sharing, driving the linkages, but more importantly, showcase what initiatives like Invest in Africa and Strathmore uh, University, which are part of an ecosystem, how we can all come together and offer this support. But as I mentioned, Ingrid, there are very, very few measures that have been taken by SMEs to reduce risk to enhance our resilience. And some of this is not just about the SMEs. We need the right policy frameworks. We need institutional mechanisms. We need to drive information and awareness. We need financial resources. We need to bring um, you know, banks and financial uh, service providers to provide support to um, SMEs. Brilliant. And Wangeshi, I'm so glad you belabored on that point of governance because it's actually one of the things I'd wanted us to talk about. I'll just take a very quick break, but when we come back, we'll pick it up from that point. And um, we'll go Thank for you. a break right now, and you can be part of the conversation by sending your feedback to our social media handles at Metropole TVKE on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 